welcome to part two. We're going to be focusing on AI, some HUD, then implementing a beautiful custom environment from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. All right, so let's start. This should be where we left off from last time. Otherwise, feel free to use the project files in the link down below. It should give you the same project file that you can start with. So you should also have a bunch of player animations in your animations folder. Otherwise, I will put the link down below if you don't have that yet. And in the past tutorial, there's a part where I teach you how to implement custom characters animations. So just refer to that. Okay. But on top of that, we're actually going to bring in some enemies. So this will be your first enemy AI. So let's start with going into this folder, enemies. And let's just put this spikes in a trap folder. Now let's do ninja. In that folder, we're gonna do folder called animations, textures, mesh, AI, and now we're gonna import the enemy. So this was um, from Mixamo. It follows the same process as the tutorial before in implementing the characters. And in the description, I'll actually link a zip to this entire folder. So that'll include like the ninja mesh plus the various animations to come with that ninja. And yeah, you can follow one to one just to see and have a feel on how to implement the enemy AI. Something you can refer to in the future as well. Okay, so let's import the ninja, the 3D object. And let's just drag this in here. And we'll click import all. That should import everything, including the skeleton. And it should come with a T pose because the ninja mesh on its own does not contain any animations for now. It should give you a few errors, but we can just ignore them for now. Cool, recording is going good. So from here, it will give you a few objects. So these four are the material, sorry, these five are the materials of the ninja. That gives Ninja its color. So we can drag all of that into textures. Yup. And these ones in green are technically animation sequences in a typo. So we can drag that into the animations folder. It will also give you a skeletal mesh, a physics asset, and a skeleton. And you can all put this into the mesh. All right, let's be sure to save all as well, just to make sure all of our progress is saved. It's really good practice to do that. For the next part, we'll just hop into our My Assets player, and we're actually gonna copy and duplicate this. So instead of the Kachujin, it will display the Ninja instead, and we're just gonna use this as a template for our Ninja, so we don't have to redo any of the creating the blueprints from, from scratch. So just left click, drag this into your enemies folder and we'll say copy here. And if we go back to that same directory, we should have Kachujin here and then we just put this into Ninja. And we're gonna name this Ninja underscore blueprint. All right. We're just gonna open that up. And first thing we're gonna do is Replace the mesh. Skeletal mesh. So if you recall before, it mentioned a skeletal mesh when we import a ninja. So let's just click ninja skeletal mesh here. And you should import all right, hopefully, including all your textures as well. One thing you can do to scale it up to kind of fill that ceiling of the capsule is to lock this so it scales even in all directions like a value 1.2 or something, or like even 1.15, 1.1. Yep. Next thing we want to do is delete the camera, because technically we won't be using the camera of this ninja since our player blueprint Katrina PP also is already using a camera. So we can just delete those two camera assets. 
All right, then we're just gonna drag this ninja into world. So the ninja blueprint class, we just left click, drag this in third person example mag and just plop them right there. You can even rotate them by pressing E and your ninja should be there. Cool. Yeah, it comes with a capsule component as well, which blocks me, the player, from phasing through the person. I guess another confusing thing is this camera plane clipping. So the, your player camera is actually colliding with a ninja mesh. And it's making it so that you cannot see through the ninja. But it doesn't give like the best player experience when it does that. It can get quite clunky. So one thing we can do with that is to open up the ninja blueprint again. So let's did that one. And then we're just going to search for collision. And so just capture component, collision presets, custom. And we're gonna make it so that it ignores the camera. So that way this capture component, if a camera phases through it, the camera is not gonna like clip through it. So that's what the ignore part is. You can also go through each one here. Uh, character mesh, you can do the same for that. Set this to custom, then ignore camera. Cool, so in that sense, your camera should not be clipping past the ninja anymore, which will be great. Nice. All right, T-posing ninja is in. Okay. Cool, okay. So for next step, let's actually start importing all of our ninja animations. So there'll be everything in the zip file except for the ninja. So you got your crouch, your kick, your run, your sneak walk, and your death. So we'll just select all of that and then put this and then just drag this in our ninja animations folder. An important step here is to untick skeletal import mesh and to make sure your skeleton points to ninja skeleton. Oh, actually a safer way to do it is to, yeah, reset default to make sure um, you don't have any other settings that you might have touched last time that might screw with the implementation. But yeah, make sure skeletons selected here, import mesh is unticked, and we'll just click import all. Okay, we should have all of your ninjas here. And I guess some of these animations are not quite useful to us, like the T pose, so we can just select all of that and right click delete. And we can start giving these more intuitive names. So if you double click this, it will open and you'll be able to preview the animation. Great. All right. So for that one, we'll rename this to death. For this next one, it's the walking animation. So we'll name this walk. Next one should be the Naruto run. And this one will be the kick. And this crouch pose will be our idle pose. So that'll be the animation it uses once it's staying still. Great. So now we have five animation sequences and a good practice here is to right click and create this into animation montages. I'll explain this more later on. We just save all. Something, some of these might appear as a T-Pose montage, but that's just a visual error in the viewport. If you click it, it shall refresh. Let's head back into our animation folder. We're going to create something called a blend space. So right click animation blend space 1D. We'll select ninja skeleton and we'll name this ninja underscore BS. So a blend space blends the animations between its idle and its run pose, which will be more clear as we visualize it. All right, so let's open this. And we're going to drag the green idol, the animation sequence, onto the very start of this timeline. And the walk right in the middle and the run at the very end. Something you can do here is rename this name to say speed. Actually, yeah, let's set the maximum axis value to 400. And we can hop back into our ninja blueprint and click character movement here and search for something called walk speed. And we can set this to the same value as 400. So 600 is currently our, our player character's speed. So maybe we can make this AI slower. Gives the player an opportunity to 
outplay or run away from the ninja for a little bit. And yeah, so we set that to 400 as well. So if you preview here, you can use this green diamond to scroll left to right to preview. It's like blending. It's kind of strange here. <laughs> but yeah, it's blending the idle, the walk, and the run. That just makes the animations appear smoother as your character will move in the physical space. All right, next part is we'll create an animation blueprint. We'll name this, oh yeah, be sure to collect the, skeleton, the ninja skeleton here. Ninja underscore ABP stands for animation blueprint. We'll, so we'll open that up. And we're gonna right click and search for slot. So we'll create a default slot. We just plug this in here, left click drag, and we, from there, we left click drag and create a new state machine. And we're gonna open up this new state machine. And from here, we're gonna left click drag a state. We can name this idle run. So double click that. And from here, we're gonna left click drag and point to our ninja blend space, the one that we did. So that'll be like this one here that blends from idle to walk to run. So we just create a reference to that. And we want to right click, promote this to a variable and to activate this eye icon here. So we can edit this in other parts of this blueprint. Essentially, it's this animation blueprint is trying to grab the pawn owner. So a pawn, which means your ninja character over here. And it's trying to get the velocity of your ninja and it's converting it to a float value that goes into the speed. So if the pawn owner is valid, if it exists, it sets the speed. And that speed is related to this blend space over here. So essentially, depending on the speed of your character, it tries to blend it which will make more sense once we see the character more. But yeah, it essentially follows the same code as the player blueprint that we've done before, the blend space we have in animation blueprint. So we just click save all here. We wanna hop back into the ninja blueprint. So that'll be like in this folder, just double click this. And you just make sure you're not searching anything in the details and you wanna click on your ninja BP underscore self. Oh, oh, my bad, sorry, I mean mesh. And then, oh, never mind. It's character movement actually. <laughs> oh wait, is it character movement? I'm trying to find the place where you can plug in the animation blueprints. It's somewhere in here. Oh yeah, here it is, sorry. <laughs> My eyes is just skimming past me. Cool. So right now the animation blueprint is set to none and we want to set this to the ninja ABP. ABP that we just did. So that'll be this one. And then, yeah, if we hit compile, it should convey your ninja in its idle post at speed zero. Cool. All right, so let's head into the event graph. And we are gonna plug in, so right click and then plug in a value, a code called event tick. From event tick, we'll set a delay of three seconds. And we'll do a simple move to location. We're gonna get controller. And the goal will be a, oh, first let's get the actor location. Get random point in navigable radius. Plug this yellow value in there. Let's set this to a thousand. Cool, you can hit F7 or click compile and you should be good to go. And we can press Alt P or this button here to just play the level. The ninja should not be moving for now and that's because we missed an important step. 
that would be to place a nav mesh bounds volume. So in the viewport, you can ho hover over to place actors, click that. Then you can type in nav, and we're going to place something called a nav mesh bounds volume. It will come in as a cube. You can press W to move it and drag the buttons, and then you can press R to scale. And we'll just I'm going to make sure this fits our entire level. Yep, you can also drag this blue thing up here to make sure it fits these uh, platforms at the top as well. So yeah, this cube now fits our entire level. Let's make sure it's extended. Yep. Another thing you can do, a tip is to press P to visualize this nav mesh bounds volume. So the green space is all of the areas that the AI can walk in. And you can press P again to hide this. So that's pretty much what the nav mesh volume does. It tells the AI where it can walk. So if we press play or alt P, your ninja should be a moving. That was really a sudden movement there. But yeah, it follows the code that we did before. Every three seconds, it tries to find uh, a thousand units from it, a random location, and it moves to that every three seconds. So great, it looks like the blend space and animation blueprint came in nicely. All right, let's just go to our content browser and save all here. We're future proofing ourselves from crashes. <laughs> so something you might have noticed is that the snapping of the ninja when it moves is quite sharp. Between the transitions of the idle and the run. So one thing you can do to solve that is to open up your ninja blend space. And you want to scroll down here and target weight interpolation sample. So less than zero, there won't be any noticeable change. A higher value means a faster transition. And 0 0.1 will be like an extremely slow transition. So if we just test it, let's try and go with um, one Alt P to play. Let's just see how the transition is like. Yeah, it'll be quite slow. <laughs> it's a little funny. That might be what you want, or maybe what you don't want. Feel free to experiment with these values. Let's try five. I'm quite happy with that. I really like that result, so we'll keep that. But feel free to experiment with that value, of course. 